In this screencast, we look at how to account for work in process inventory when the item being manufactured or the service being provided is unique and of sufficient value to justify keeping individual accounting records. Generally, the accounting for direct materials and direct labor is straightforward and most of the attention is on the accounting for overhead. Overhead is accumulated in a temporary account often referred to as the overhead control account. And the main question is how to take the overhead costs out of the overhead control account and assign it to work in process. In this example, we'll use what is called an actual overhead system where overhead is accumulated during the accounting period and then allocated at the end of the accounting period based on some cost driver, in this example, direct labor cost. The direct labor cost from the two work and process accounts, 2400 and 3000 and do a side calculation. And essentially what we want to do is prorate the overhead control cost based on the percentage of direct labor costs associated with each job. The percentage of total direct labor associated with job 121 is 2400 over a total of 5400. So if we take that 2400 and divide by the 5400, we end up with 44.44%. .44%. A similar calculation allows us to calculate the percentage associated with job 122 as 55.56%. We now use the prorated percentages to take the overhead out of the overhead control account and to assign it to the work and process account. So in the last slide, we calculated the percentages now we can use those percentages to actually allocate the overhead. So for job number 121, we take the total overhead cost of 10,700 and multiply that by the percentage 44.44%. And if you work that out, then you can see that the amount of overhead that goes from overhead control to work in process is $4,756 and some rounding error. Importantly, we accomplish this with a debit to the work in process account and a credit to the overhead control account. We would do a similar calculation for job 122, but now instead of using 10,700 times 44.44%, we would use 55.56%, and we end up debiting work in process for $5,944 and crediting the overhead control account for $5,944. Notice that the ending balance in the overhead account is zero. One disadvantage of an actual overhead system is that you have to wait until the end of the accounting system in order to assign overhead. We can get around this by using an estimate of the overhead, which is called the predetermined overhead rate. So in the next slide, we'll show how we can accomplish this. We start with estimates of the amount of total overhead. In this case, we'll use $10,000. And an estimate of the total amount of direct labor, in this case, $5,000. And as you can see, we can then get a predetermined overhead rate of 10,000 divided by 5,000 equals $2 per direct labor dollar. So what this means then is that every time we assign a direct labor dollar to a job, we will assign $2 in overhead. Using our predetermined overhead rate, we can now assign 
overhead to both jobs 121 and 122 in real time. So for example, job 121 had $2,400 of direct labor costs. We multiply that by the overhead rate of $2, and therefore we're going to assign $4,800 in overhead. And once again, we accomplish this with a debit to the work and process account for $4,800 and a credit to the overhead control account for $4,800. We can then repeat the calculation for job 122, in which case we get a debit of $6,000 and a credit of $6,000. But note, at the end of the period, we have a ending balance of $100 a credit balance, which means that the overhead has been overapplied, or in other words, too much overhead has been assigned to jobs. In order to fix this, we have a couple of alternatives. Since the $100 is probably immaterial, we can just debit the overhead control account for $100 and credit cost of goods sold in order to square the accounts. In this example, we'll assume that the actual overhead costs were two million one hundred thousand and that the amount of overhead applied during the period was one million nine hundred and eighty thousand this leaves us with a debit balance of a hundred and twenty thousand which for the sake of the example we will assume is material when we have an, a material balance in the account rather than closing it to cost of goods sold we want to allocate the hundred and twenty thousand against the various downstream accounts. In other words, work in process, finished goods, and cost of goods sold. So let's, for example, say that the overhead was originally allocated on the basis of machine hours. So one way of closing the $120,000 in overhead costs would be to prorate it based on machine hours. So after investigation, we see that jobs in the various accounts have so many machine hours. And what we can see then is that work in process has 11 over 55 or 20% of the machine hours. Finished goods has 10% of the machine hours used during the period. And therefore, cost of goods sold has 70% of the machine hours used during the period. Note that GAAP doesn't require that we use the original cost driver in order to reallocate the under or over applied overhead. For example, we could have chosen to allocate the 120,000 based on the number of jobs in each of the categories, and this may have been a more convenient way of going about it. Continuing the example, remember that work in process has 20% of the machine hours, finished goods 10% of the machine hours, and cost of goods sold 70% of the machine hours. We can take the $120,000 that was underapplied, and we can close the account with a credit of $120,000 and then we can allocate the debits based on the pro rata percentages. So 20% of the $120,000 will go to work in process, 10% of the $120,000 or $12,000 will be a debit to finished goods, and then finally 70% of the $120,000 or $84,000 is debited to cost of goods sold. After we've made these journal entries, the ending balance in the overhead control account is zero, and that's what we're looking for.